Hi class, this is a unit C, part one. This begins the unit on organic chemistry, or as I like to say in abbreviation talk, biocules. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, some key ideas for this unit are going to be, how are macro, and if we understand the word macro, big, big molecules made, and what are the molecules of life? And since we are, as we establish in Unit A, we are life, we're made of cells, how are the molecules uh, that make up us made? And that's going to be the focus of this unit, Unit C. So some vocabulary words uh, to look at, jot down if you're not aware of them or you find vocabulary in biology challenging hydrolysis uh, if a good thing to do is break the word down right hydro is going to mean water h2o lysis anything lysis is breaking apart so water breaking uh, and we're going to look at this reaction uh, synthesis uh, you can write a synthesis paragraph a paragraph that brings many things together so synthesis is going to be building monomer like a monocycle or monocle a one eye one eyed glass glass piece mono means one so this is going to be a subunit a building block for our macromolecules poly <coughs> excuse me means many so these are going to be our bigger molecules our macromolecules and carbon uh, anything in organic chemistry all the biologically important molecules are going to use carbon as their backbone. So organic chemistry is carbon-based chemistry. So when we burn hydrocarbons in our car, when we drive around, we are burning fossil fuels that were carbon-based. And this produces carbon dioxide gas. So as we just said, I just said, organic chemistry is carbon-based. And why carbon anyways? First of all, it's abundant. Second of all, very versatile. Uh, it easily makes long chains, polymers. And carbon, due to its electrons, wants in its uh, chemical life to make four other bonds to become stable, to get the octet in its outermost layer. So if you're familiar with chemistry, you'll know that we have four uh, valence electrons and to become stable, carbon would like to make four bonds. So carbon can make single bonds, it can make double bonds, and it can make triple bonds. So carbon is very versatile in its bonding ability. So looking at carbon's uh, atomic structure, six protons, six neutrons in the nucleus, uh, and six electrons, but in the outermost orbital we have four, we call those four in the outermost uh, orbital valence electrons. So when we meet carbon, it is always going to be making four bonds. And the reason it made these four covalent bonds, which are very stable, high energy bonds, uh, we're going to see four lines. So if you're not familiar with the notation, when we see a single line, that represents two electrons and that represents a single bond. We also might see carbon existing uh, with double bonds between it, so two single lines. Um, so just to be aware of the notation that we're going to use when we look at molecules, a line represents a single bond. In this unit, Unit C, probably the most challenging unit we've come up against, uh, there are going to be four types of biological molecules, henceforth called biocules. Our carbs, shown on the side in picture A, these are going to be what we call sugars, starches. We like carbs. We like donuts, right? These are carbs. Lipids, shown in the diagram as D, these are going to be the fats, uh, things that we eat, olive oil, adipose tissue, our body fat, proteins, um, shown in B, these are going to really, these are the backbone, these are the workhorse of the human body, 
And we're going to spend a lot of time uh, in this course talking about proteins, when we talk about enzymes, when we talk about digestion and digestive enzymes. Uh, fourth, finally, nucleic acids pictured over there as C. The, this is our DNA and our RNA. These are the molecules that transmit and carry information through generations of cells and through generations of organisms. So, except for all our macromolecules, for all the polymers, uh, they're all going to be polymers except for lipids. Lipids, when we look at them, are actually comprised of not a repeating chain of the same type of molecule. They're going to be made up of different parts. All the others, the carbs, the proteins, and the nucleic acids are going to be built of a subunit, a building block that we can refer to either as a monomer or a subunit. And if you look at a wall of bricks like we have in our classroom, we would say the subunit of this wall is the brick, right? We're not talking about bricks here. We're talking about molecules. So monomers mean the molecules that we can link together to build macromolecules. And the molecules in our body are going to be big. These are the polymers, the repeating chains built on the monomers. Uh, so an analogy for those of us that our brains uh, can remember visually, and some of you have said, I re recognize I'm a visual learner. The This necklace made up of these little balls, right? Obviously, the necklace itself would be analogous to the polymer. It's made up, however, of smaller subunits that are repeated. These little individual silver beads would be analogous to the monomers that build up polymers in our body. So foreshadowing what we're going to look at is the two types of reactions. I can make this necklace. This is going to be synthesis. Or I could chop this necklace up. This is going to be hydro lysis, breaking down. So two types of reactions that we'll, we will re encounter. And these are groups or, or types of reactions that the specific reactions will belong to. These are general organizing uh, words that we can use throughout the course. So dehydration synthesis is when we take if we're going back to the necklace, we take the individual beads and we link them together. Obviously, in chemistry speak, we're making bonds when we link monomers together. We are building polymers. It's going to require an input of energy. So we're really storing energy and we're storing energy in these bonds that we can then utilize later when we need it. And water is going to be produced, meaning when we see it as a chemical reaction, it's going to be on the right-hand side of the reaction. Water is a product. Um, so water out, energy in, and a schema that we're going to see, we're using these, again, spheres, right, like beads. These are the individual monomers, and we are putting them together. We're seeing them being joined here. Water comes out and we make a bond, a single bond here between these two monomers, dehydration synthesis. So an example in our own body, we make a polymer, a polysaccharide specifically called glycogen. We make it from glucose and we store it in our liver for later. So we store the energy in the bonds of glycogen between the individual glucose molecules. Again, the analogy, the monomers, the beads being strung together to build the necklace, the polymer, macromolecule. The reverse of this, when we need to break something down, it is going to be called hydro water lysis, water breaking, breaking down 
uh, with water. So energy is going to be now released. The energy is coming out of the bond and water is not going to be a product. It is going to be a reactant. So it's going to be on the left hand side of the chemical reaction. Uh, so again, using the schema of circles, of balls, beads, we're taking a big molecule and look at that bad spelling there, Miss Sterling. Uh-oh, we'll have to fix that. Uh, we're breaking it apart and water now is required and I apologize do not write molecules like that right please right there we go apology for you so taking a bond and breaking it utilizing water example of hydrolysis we eat starch that's we love pasta we love breads and we break it down into glucose uh, with using our digestive enzymes so all the plant-based matter that we eat contains starch macaroni and cheese we break it down to get the glucose uh, so what did we talk about we talked about macromolecules are the large big molecules that make up life and there are four types that we will study carbs lipids proteins and nucleic acids they're going to be big complicated molecules looking ahead next screencast we're going to consider carbohydrates and lipids and at the end of this you should be able to name comfortably name list them out the four groups of macromolecules and diagram and explain synthesis and hydrolysis and provide examples of these reactions in the human body. Hope that